I'm now going to demonstrate the rocky bottom protocol. Every time you take a rocky bottom sample, you'll need to get at least 200 bugs to have a representative sample of your stream. In order to get to 200, you can take up to four nets of up to 90 seconds each. However, once you take a net, you must count every bug on that net, even if you pass 200. Because of this, we recommend starting with 20 seconds, which is the minimum net time, when you're taking your first sample at a new site. After that, you can adjust your net times accordingly. For example, if you collect 75 bugs with your first 20 second net, you may want to make your second net a little longer, like 40 seconds, so that you can try and hit 200 with fewer nets. And if you only collect 10 bugs or so in your first net, you'll want to increase your sample time to the full 90 seconds to see if you can get as close to 200 as possible. You'll need your partner, your net and poles, and durable gloves or a small shovel. Start at the furthest downstream riffle at your monitoring site. One partner will stand downstream of the riffle and hold the net in the water so the water is flowing through it. Make sure you don't tilt the net too far back so water doesn't flow over the top. Your sample area will be one square foot directly in front of your net. The other partner should grab two or three rocks from outside the sample area, clean them off, and use them to anchor the bottom of the net. Now you're ready to collect your sample. First, spend three quarters of your sample time, so 15 seconds for a 20 second sample, picking up rocks from the sample area and rubbing them like a bar of soap in the water. This will knock any macros that are hanging onto the rocks into the net. Spend the remaining one quarter of the time, so five seconds for a 20 second sample, disturbing the stream bottom with your gloved hands or shovel. You want to disturb in a scooping up motion rather than a grinding down motion. Once you're finished, clean off the anchor rocks into the net and put them back. Then each partner should grab a side of the net and lift it straight up. Fold the net in half and hand it to one person to carry to your sorting area. Now that you've collected your sample, it's time to identify your bugs. Make sure you have an ice cube tray filled with water from the stream ready to go. Lay your net on top of your table and start looking for bugs. Anytime you find one, carefully pick it up with tweezers or a pipette and place it in the ice cube tray. If you're more experienced with identifying macros, you can call out what you're finding as you find it for your partner to tally on the data sheet. If you're newer, sort bugs by appearance as you put them in the tray by putting similar bugs in the same compartment. Then you can figure out what each group is at the end. As you're going, you'll want to spray the net with your spray bottle full of stream water every few minutes to keep the bugs hydrated. This will cause them to move around and be easier to spot. When you feel confident you've picked all the bugs off one side of the net, flip half of the net over and collect any bugs on the bottom side or on the table. Then flip that half down and flip the other half up. Once you've counted all the bugs and recorded them on your data sheet, return your macros to the stream. If you've passed 200 bugs, you're finished. Clean off your net and tablecloth in the stream. If you haven't hit 200 bugs, take another net from a different riffle that is upstream of the first riffle you sampled. Remember that you can adjust the length of your net time accordingly, so if you're almost at 200, take a 20 second net. If you've only found a few bugs in your first net, your second net can be as long as 90 seconds. In order for your data to be approved, you must either have at least 200 bugs or four nets with at least three of them being the full 90 seconds to show maximum effort. 